We're talking pirate radio with the politics show in an hour. First, though, on BBC One, topical issues with Susanna Reid. This week, the first visit from a pope in nearly 30 years. But with the sex abuse scandal, its attitude to women, to gays and to contraception, just what is it with the Catholic Church and sex? Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live, where you help debate the big issues of the day. It's the first visit by a pope in three decades. But is the Catholic Church's response to the sex abuse scandal and its doctrines on women, homosexuality and condoms overshadowing the trip? Has the Catholic Church become obsessed with sex? Despite the mauling it's been getting, it has plenty of defenders. When asked what the Roman Catholic Church has done for us, columnist Melanie McDonough isn't short of answers. It carries out huge humanitarian work throughout the world. It defends human rights and it campaigns against wars. The Catholic Church and its Pope are an unrivaled force for good. Also on the programme this morning, the threats to burn the Quran, footballers and prostitutes and phone hacking. Not a recipe for Sunday morning tranquillity, I grant you, but I'll try to keep the peace between Jack Valero, very much the public face of the Catholic organisation Opus Dei here in the UK, alongside him, feminist Julie Bindle, who confesses to being a Marmite writer, who you either love or you hate. And Colm O'Gorman is a survivor of sexual abuse by a Catholic priest in Ireland. He now runs Amnesty International there. He's also the author of Beyond Belief, about his experience. And we'll be speaking with people on all sides of the debate and from all over the country. And you can join them to talk to us live via your webcam. Go to our website and click on the link to get connected. You can make your point by phone. Calls cost up to four pence a minute from a landline. Calls from mobiles may cost considerably more. And texts will be charged at your standard message rate. <laughs> When the Pope touches down in Edinburgh on Thursday, one thing's for sure, he won't get the rapturous reception given to John Paul II when he kissed British soil 28 years ago. Pope Benedict's state visit is controversial, both for its cost and because of rising doubts about the reputation of the Roman Catholic Church and about Pope Benedict himself. A BBC poll published this morning shows that Catholics themselves think women should have a greater role in the church and half believe celibacy for priests is outdated. In fact, for many, the problem with the Catholic Church boils down to one thing, sex. It's one of the most controversial visits by a head of state in recent times. In the five years since Pope Benedict took office, the Catholic Church has been rocked by sex abuse scandals. And the Pope himself has been criticised for his attitude towards women, homosexuality and contraception. Some say the Church's dogmatic views on sex are causing it major problems. There have been numerous protests over cover-ups of child abuse by priests. Last year, the Irish Justice Minister expressed his country's anger. It is really uh, an awful indictment of people in the Church uh, and people who allowed it in the Church to happen. Earlier this year, the Pope wrote an open letter apologising to the Irish victims of child abuse. But they say that's not enough. He needs urgently to come here and say sorry, not to say a mass, to come and say sorry and be contrite. The church has reformed its procedures, however belatedly, to try to stop abuse happening again. But it faces a litany of other difficulties, all relating to its doctrines on aspects of sex. It has problems recruiting new priests. Critics say this is partly due to an outdated requirement for strict celibacy. And many gay people, particularly gay Catholics, have been deeply offended by the current Pope. Two years ago, he said homosexuality was as great a danger to the planet as the destruction of the rainforests. And the church is in trouble over women's rights as well. When the Anglican Church announced this year it would ordain women bishops, the Vatican said the ordination of women was a grave crime, the same term used about child abuse. 
The Catholic Church resolutely defends its traditional approach to the role of the genders in religion. So we go out. And it's all going great, you know. Suddenly, it just goes off on one. Not without a... Condom, condom, condom. Government ads like this promoting safe sex upset the Vatican. But the Pope claims condoms are not a weapon in the fight against the spread of AIDS in Africa. He says they could make it worse. Fidelity in marriage is his answer. To his critics, Pope Benedict and the teaching of the church on sex and sexuality are dangerously out of date. Others insist this is evidence of a church keeping true faith in its beliefs, a church unafraid to give clear moral guidance in a fickle modern world. Well, we want to know what you think. Join us now via your webcam and vote as well in our text poll because the question we're asking this morning is, is the Catholic Church obsessed with sex? If you think it is, text the word vote followed by yes. If you think it's not, text vote followed by no. Our text number is 81771 and texts will be charged at your standard message rate. We'll be discussing the result of the poll at the end of the programme and for full terms and conditions visit bbc.co.uk slash Sunday Morning Live. Colm, you were abused by a priest and uh, one of 10,000 who've come forward across the world with claims of abuse. Do you feel the Catholic Church has let you down? Well, I think, first of all, we have to be clear about what we mean by the Catholic Church, and I think it's terribly important that we separate out both the institution of the Church and its power structures and, indeed, the faith, because mm -hmm. the last thing uh, I would want uh, anybody to think is that I was in any way attacking or undermining a faith. But absolutely, I feel uh, that the institution of the Catholic Church hasn't just betrayed me and uh, the hundreds of thousands of uh, people who've been raped and abused by priests as children. It's be betrayed our families, our communities. It's, be be it's betrayed itself, its own founding principles. It's betrayed simple principles of love, justice and truth. You say that you separate the two out, but have you lost your faith? Um, that's a much bigger question, I suppose. Uh, I've lost faith in the Catholic Church and in the institution of the Catholic Church. I don't believe... Uh, um, that it is an honest, true uh, institution. OK. Um, Jack Valero, you're a spokesperson for Opus Dei in the UK. Has the Catholic Church lost its moral authority over this issue? Well, I don't think it's lost its moral authority, but it, of course it's lost a lot over this issue. I'm very angry too that this could happen in my church. I mean, sexual abuse of children is endemic in society, but it's much mm -hmm. worse when it's carried out by a priest. And so I'm very angry. But more than about people uh, doing this, because there's bad people everywhere, it's about the failure, the, institu the institutional failure of the bishops to handle it mm -hmm. and to allow it to continue. I mean, that is absolutely terrible. So that's the scandal, I think. And many bishops have resigned. Others should resign, should keep resigning. Procedures have been put in place. So I'm, very, I'm, I'm much happier about that. I mean, in the UK in 2001, procedures based on the Nolan report were put in place which make the Catholic Church a much safer place. Do, do the procedures and make the Catholic Church a safe place now? Yes, absolutely. I think so. I mean, at the moment, in 2010, the Catholic Church is the only institution in the United Kingdom which publishes in the web all accusations ma made against it on sexual abuse. And, you know, in the last, the last year, this, this uh, was, I think, for contemporary accusations against priests which are being investigated. It takes, takes them very seriously. They are reported to the police immediately. All that wasn't the case before. So I think it's really important it's, it's been made safe. Of course, reparation yeah. must be made for what happened in the past. Julie, so now uh, it, it's cleaned up its act. It's one of the safest places to be and is transparent, unlike other institutions. Well, I absolutely agree with you, Jack, about the transparency. And it's had a long time coming, and bear this in mind. Yeah. Um, it had to be actually forced mm out of the church by feminists, by human rights activists and by the survivors of childhood sexual abuse, of sure. which thankfully uh, you know, there are now many who are coming out. But it's not, it's not at all safe. Any religion or institution that promotes um, the subordination of women and children um, and the absolute authority of men uh, means that this is going to exacerbate 
sexual abuse and the rights of men, this perceived right of men to treat women and children um, as sexual playthings and to allow them to dominate women and children sexually and otherwise. So no, of course the Catholic Church is not safe. I, I would agree that, that uh, things are changing, uh, but I also would agree absolutely what Julia said. Change has been forced. Change has never happened in an honest, proactive way. Uh -huh. And I think that's the greatest corruption that lies at the heart of this. Again, I'd agree with Jack that the failure of bishops is a huge failure here, yeah. but the failure of the Bishop of Rome, of this Pope, and the previous Pope to address this issue when they knew it existed, well, when they had a clear, a clear understanding, not just of the reality of paedophilia and the fact that priests abuse children. First references I've found in church history to paedophilia come from the first century AD. Right. First rules were introduced in 346. There's been church law across the millennia to address right. with all of this. And yet this Pope, okay. as Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, Pope John Paul II, Pope John I, repeatedly told us from the 1990s on that they didn't even know such a thing was possible. Well, Jack? I think that you have to look at the facts because obviously this is a very bad thing but in order to solve it we must understand the facts. I think that um, so up to uh, who, who is responsible for priests and what they do? It's the bishop. And who's responsible and, for and, bishops? And, and, and okay the bishops are nominated and, and named by the Pope who can name them or take their resignations but the bishops are responsible for keeping the priest under control. If the priest does something wrong they, they, can, they, they, they get rid Jack, of them that's not, that's and not so true. on. That's not true actually. It is true. The, the uh, bishops appoint uh, are responsible for priests in their diocese and the direct yes. line manager, the direct governance of any diocese, of any Catholic diocese, is the responsibility of Rome. No, and Rome, st Rome steps in very, very quickly through the Congregation for the Clergy, no. uh, steps in very, very quickly in cases of priests or indeed individual bishops who ste step outside of existing dogma or church rules. Ah, they have not okay. done so in relation to clerical, no, ch uh, no, clerical child they, sexual abuse, there is in, in part because the approach of the institution has been to spin, to lie, to deceive. Jack, to pretend wonder, the problem oh, okay. doesn't okay. exist and then to suggest that they're dealing with it meaningfully. Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack I just want to ask, yeah. what do you expect that the Pope will do on this issue when he comes to visit the UK? Well, in other trips he has met with victims of sexual abuse and heard their stories and uh, presumably he will do that again here. I mean, it's not been announced because they... Would they, you like they it to see him do that? Of course. Yeah. Of course he, will, he will hold and, a, and, a private and, prayer meeting where he will meet with selected people who he knows wants anything difficult or challenging. It will be presented to the Pope issuing yet another apology and it will instead be a, another spin and another deflection. Well, and we and should and all be not, cynical. It's not acceptable he should actually be arrested for crimes against humanity when he steps uh, on that soil. Jack? Is, what did you say? Not he should be arrested for crimes against no, humanity. No, why? What crime has he done? He what crime has he done? He, 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 has, he, he has is not responsible personally for all these things because, I, as I was saying, is that the bishops, that the bishops the are responsible... Just a minute. The bishops are responsible for the thing and up to 2001 he was not involved because the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith were only given the job to look after That's this in true. 2001. That is not true. In, 2000, in, 2001, this is a of fact. in 2001, as Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger in his paper Sactatorium Tutela, he wrote to every bishop in the world saying that his department would, and I'm quoting, continue to have exclusive no. competence would, would in how these, the would cases. continue no. to have exclusive competence, Jack. You're That's misquoting and you're factually incorrect. I want to just talk, I want to, to have. I want to, talk to Father true. Stephen Wang, who is a teacher in a Catholic seminary. Um, Father Wang, thanks very much indeed for joining us. What is it like at the moment to be a Catholic priest um, with this scandal going on in the background? Well, I, I think it's appalling that this abuse has taken place in the church. And not just what's happened, but the fact that it has not been dealt with properly. And I think that I've shown that the Catholic priest because of that. But there's also that, that from most Catholics, there is an incredible amount of love and Father Wang, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but um, we, we have a, pr a technical problem with the sound and, and unfortunately we can't hear what you're saying at the moment. We're going to try and get that fixed and come back to you. Um, the question that we're asking this morning is, is the Catholic Church obsessed with sex? And Jack, I wonder to what extent do you think that the celibacy of priests is an issue? Um, in the BBC poll, almost half of the Catholics asks said that the um, Pope should not continue to insist that priests are celibate. Well, I'm very surprised by this poll because most Catholics I know are happy with priests being celibate somehow, even though they can't articulate the theology behind it. I mean, celibacy is something that has happened in the Catholic Church, in the Catholic priesthood from the very beginning. 
Uh, it hasn't been enforced from the very beginning, well, has it? It's only no, since the 11th century that the requirement for a priest to that's be That was in the council, yes, when it was defined finally in the mm. council. But in the early, in the early centuries, peop, uh, married people could be ordained, but they would be required to be celibate from then on. So that celibacy requirement was always there. Now, you could agree or disagree with it, but that's the history of it. And there are several, you know, Christ was celibate. People who become priests give their lives to God completely. The, the, the Catholic Church takes that priesthood very seriously, takes marriage very seriously, and thinks somehow that you have, you have to do one or the other. Julie, is the celibacy of priests a problem for the Catholic well, Church? Well, often people use celibacy as a justification for the sexual abuse of mm. children, and of course it's not. There is no such thing as a direct line between sexual frustration and the desire to sexually abuse a non-consenting child or yeah. adult. Um, and this is what deeply worries me, it's the hypocrisy of that ruling, that celibacy on the one hand is enforced, child sexual abuse and, we, haven't, uh, we mustn't forget, the sexual abuse of adult women by clergy is also excused, justified, covered up. Father Stephen Wang joins us again. We fixed the technical problem and okay. we can hear you now, Father Wang. Um, is it time to change the rule on celibacy for Catholic priests? I think that celibacy is an enormous gift to the church and to priesthood. Uh, it allows you as a priest to give your whole heart to the people that you're with, to really put them at the center of your life in the way that if you're a husband, obviously your, your wife and your children come before everything else. Is it and I, th I think as Jack has said that for most Catholics there is a real appreciation of the love that the priest is able to give to people because of that, that gift of himself in celibacy. Do you think that it allows the priest to lead a full life and be in touch with the congregation, not having a wife, not having a family? Absolutely. I think celibacy, it's about a particular way of loving. There are many different ways of loving. And you're open to people with a, with a transparent heart and you're really able to be present in people's lives. And as I say, I think people really appreciate that when they, they get to know their priests and they see how dedicated they are. Seems to, it seems to fly in the, in the face of every opinion poll that's been taken, not just yours, but previous polls have been taken of Catholics who certainly seem to feel that the celibate priesthood is an issue. Most people would like to see their priests being afforded the opportunity to, leave, to, to lead full lives. I must say also, I think it's a little bit of an insult to, to Christian churches where married priests are the norm, or indeed it makes me wonder as to why the current Pope is uh, open to welcoming in whole dioceses. Uh, of Protestant uh, clergy who are married clergy and allowing them to continue on as, 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 as married priests. Uh, I, I personally uh, can't imagine what a lonely experience it might be for somebody and I'm not saying I know it's not the case for every priest and I know every priest deals with these issues differently yes, but what, a, what, a, what a, a lonely life it must be uh, to be required to be constantly at the service of others and not to have the kind of love and support that one might need in one's own life. And I would just uh, uh, finally just like to echo everything that Julie said about creating the links between celibacy and paedophilia. There is no link between celibacy and paedophilia. A requirement to be celibate does not cause an adult man to go out and sexually mm -hmm. assault or rape a child. And we should end that link for once and yeah. for all Absolutely. and separate that yeah. debate. Uh, Jack, uh, let's talk about homosexuality. Right. Because this year the uh, number two to the Pope said that uh, gay people were more likely to commit uh, child abuse. Um, no evidence to support no, I d that. I, I don't think he actually that said that, but whatever he said, the church distanced itself from, from those comments. And uh, again, I don't think there is any link between homosexuality and child abuse. I think it's what? important, so it's important it's to point important out that, to that it's actually Cardinal Bertone, who's the Secretary of State, the Pope's number two, who made those comments. Yeah. So I don't know how the Pope distances yeah, but itself he, he from doesn't, the most... He, from, he didn't from, say that. Its, he didn't say that. He said, what he said was that celibacy doesn't cause pedophilia homosexuality does. No, not that. He actually, said it, he actually said it in the context of a press conference in Chile where he was dealing with cases, right. okay. a case of a priest who had re repeatedly raped and abused girls and women, fathered children by them and gone on to rape those girl okay. children as well. well so but does the abbot disgrace that right. sentiment, you know, so, speaking as a lesbian so. with, with many gay friends? Yeah. What an absolute disgrace that on the one hand we are being accused of being likely child abusers and on the other hand priests who are sexually abusing children, 
heterosexual yeah, priests are being yeah, protected. Yeah, well, I, I, and I, 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 Jack, you say that the church has, has uh, distanced itself from, from those comments, but yeah. the Pope has said homosexuality was as big a danger as the destruction no, of the rainforest. Either. No, that was does, completely what does What is the Catholic Church's the, well, issue Catholic with church, homosexuality? Right. Well, the Catholic Church has this very traditional view of marriage, that sex is for marriage, marriage is between a man and a woman, to form a family, stay together for life and be open to life. This is a very traditional view. Mm -hmm. It's shared by other people. So, some people don't share it. Okay, so the church is not in favor of sex outside of marriage or sex between a man and a, and a woman who are not married or between two women and two, between two men. But the the, the, we, we, are, we, we are enjoined to look at everybody with their radical dignity and equality. So we're not supposed to discriminate against anybody. But and, you do. And no, no, but we're supposed to love everybody. Does, there are does young the gay people in, in schools being beaten up, being abused, being bullied, okay, because of the teachings of the Catholic Church and other religions? No, no, because of the teachings of the Catholic, no, no, the 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 Catholic I, Church. I think, I think it's extraordinary that you would suggest uh, that the Catholic Church's teaching on homosexuality is, just, is the same as its teaching on sex outside marriage. The Vatican has repeatedly singled out homosexuals for particular comments exactly. that, you know, however you want to dress up the language, right. uh, using language like gravely disordered, fundamentally disordered, talking about, for instance, how to allow children to be cared for or parented by same-sex couples is to do violence to those children. For the Vatican to preach about loving parents taking care of their children, however they've ended up caring for those children, uh, and suggest okay. that they're doing Jack? violence to them, given their history Colin, of violence. Right, right, right. Well, obviously, people have done wrong things, obviously. But, but our, our uh, doctrine is about the family. It's about a man and a woman getting married and raising a family. I have a family. That's, okay, uh, so that's the doctrine of the church. Now, the church is, proposes, she imposes nothing. So we talk and we can... We can the church know, imposes can. nothing. The church uh, in the United Nations has repeatedly used its position to block any moves towards granting equality. Well, uh, and proper protection it's a, it's a, it's a democratic globally. institution and people can have their voice. But then you're voice. saying it doesn't impose anything. Well, but in democracy you, you vote and that's not an imposition. I want to move on to... Voice. Who votes for the Pope? Well, the Cardinals in vote a democracy. for the Pope. That's a good question. Jack, I want to move on to... No, but um, the UN is a democracy. I'm not saying the church is a democracy. Do you, I want to talk about the position of women in the church. Right. Because one of the um, other issues that came up in the BBC poll is that uh, most, 62% uh, of those Catholics uh, who were asked thought that women should have more authority and status in the right. Catholic Church. Is that I something agree. that you yeah. would support? Yes, of course. What about women. the ordination of women? No, the, the Church will not ordain women because it considers that Christ didn't choose any women to be priests. But I think, personally, we must move away from looking at the Church as the Pope, the bishops and the priests. Mm -hmm. And now think of the Church as the people, as the Catholics. You see, pe there's something disturbing that I find disturbing mm -hmm. that is the idea that the perfect way to be a Christian is to be a priest. Whereas what we, you know, the, the perfect way to be a Christian is to be a saint, which applies equally to men, women, young, old, of all kinds. Christ and, lived and in very different times. We've actually had well, a women's liberation movement sure. that has fought for equality. The yes. Catholic Church is way, way behind on this. You cannot right. possibly okay. think of women in today's society as adhering to the times of Christ when we have had battle after battle after battle to prove that the subordination of women is a human rights abuse. Yes, and I equality agree with that. between men and women no. is not. It, it, it's not something that we're asking nicely for, it's something that we're demanding and that we deserve. Sure, but I there are women involved in the church at all levels, in the Paris level, the Austin level, the It's not levels. good enough. Indeed, indeed, and there must indeed. be more, of yeah. course. Look, I mean, however the church chooses to organise or organize itself is a matter for that church. I mean, it's, a, it's yes. an independent institution, let it do what it will. But it seems to me quite extraordinary that it wants to somehow see as lesser, are not able to fully participate or lead half of, of the human family. That seems quite extraordinary to me. And the suggestion that somehow women hadn't ordained because Christ only chose men to be their apostles. Well, Christ only, to, only chose Jewish men to be his apostles. Should right. we only have Jewish men being chosen to be priests? Or people from a particular ethnic background? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a nonsense. A couple of emails on this. Michael right. says the restrictions on sex by the Catholic Church come from monastic vows and such rules are problematic when applied generally to everyone adhering to the religion. And Beryl from Liverpool says the Catholic Church is obsessed with sex as a way to control people. If priests were allowed to marry and have children, they would have a greater understanding of all the issues affecting family life. We're joined by Neve uh, Maloney. Um, Neve, very good morning to you. Um, do you think it's time for women uh, to become priests in the Catholic Church? 
No, I don't. I mean, you know, I've worked as a youth worker within the church for a number of years now. And, you know, I just love being a Catholic woman. I mean, within the church, I found, within the teachings of John Paul II, you know, incredible teachings about my femininity, about, you know, what it means to be a woman. And I just love being a Catholic woman. And, you know, I do believe that the church is right, that, you know, the church as a whole teaching, it's a positive teaching about what it means to be a woman. And, you know, the church says that gender is a gift, and a gift from God isn't an accident. And that, you know, Jesus intended, you know, when he, when he formed the church, to, to not have women. That, you know, Jesus was someone who broke down barriers. He didn't, you know, he was a revolutionary in every way. He didn't go with the cultural norm, but yet he didn't choose women to be priests. Neve, thanks so much. Um, we've talked, Jack, about uh, women, the position of women, uh, homosexuality, uh, uh, sex abuse. There are also, of course, issues about the use of contraception, uh, reproductive rights and abortion. Is the Catholic Church obsessed with sex? Well, most of the Catholic teachings are not about sex, but obviously the media and the world are interested in controversial subjects, quite rightly, and those are mostly to do with sex. So, in that sense, that's the Catholic stories that are out there are about sexual things. Um, Michael Walsh is, uh, is a Catholic historian, uh, a practicing Catholic. Uh, Michael, is it simply that the media cannot resist the linking of such a huge institution, religious institution, and stories about sex? Well, it does seem a bit like that, I think, to us, to us Catholics. There's an awful lot more to the, to the Catholic Church than stories about sex. But it is true that the teaching, the Catholic teaching on uh, sexual morality goes back an awful long way. It goes back to St. Augustine. Um, yes, yeah, so and remind us what St. Augustine life. said. Hmm. Well, Augustine, having led a riotous life, of course, famously saying, Lord, make me chase, but not yet. Um, he uh, then became some, someone who regarded sexuality as simply a means of procreating children, and, and uh, it was an unfortunate necessity, a result of original sin. That, I have to say, is a view that did prevail in the church really up to the 20th century, and uh, formally anyway, in its formal teaching. But uh, it has changed since, happily. It's changed at the Second Vatican Council, so a much more sympathetic view of sex. Julian and Colin, do you think that it's uh, the media's obsession, society's obsession with sex, which, which gives this impression that the Catholic Church I is, think is preoccupied with issues of sexuality? To be honest, I think it's, it's the fact that the church has a rather dysfunctional or a very dysfunctional relationship with human sexuality that's, a, 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 that's the problem here. Um, I mean, uh, to my understanding of it, Jesus said very, very little about sex and sexuality generally, and those obsessions became modern church obsessions. And, you know, whilst I absolutely take the point about the Second, Va Second Vatican Council, we currently have a pope who seems to want to roll back as quickly as possible on the Second Vatican Council, so it becomes less and less relevant as the days go by. The church has just a bizarre uh, attitude towards sex yes. and sexuality, yeah. and it strips, it strips the humanity out of conversations about sexuality, and I think people push Definitely. back against that. Uh, and, and when you think about the the importance of sex and sexuality for women, because of course we are more likely to suffer sexual violence, mm. we're the ones that, that have enforced pregnancies, um, and we're the ones who, who have our lives controlled by men's sexuality. And, well, uh, and, and, and my, my view on contraception is that millions of people have died as a result of the church ruling on contraception, and that's why I think the Pope should be arrested okay. when he lands on British well, soil. I yes, think that Jeff? obviously we're against sexual violence, but we have a very exalted view of sexuality. And, you know, our view, think, I think, will make people happy, and that's what we must convince people about persuasion. Does by, it make by, women by very explain. happy with enforced well, pregnancies, with well, HIV and AIDS, with a million Jack No, just a minute, just a minute. The church is not against condoms. The church is against con uh, promiscuity. Promiscuity. The so church in is Africa, against condoms. The, ch the church is against promiscuity and sex outside of marriage. I is mean, the church now supporting the use of condoms? No, the church in marriage. is against uh, Does promiscuity. Does the church oppose the use of condoms in marriage? Well, no, the, the church is against contraception, of course. So it's, it, it's, so it's, it's against condoms. But, but, uh, but we're okay. talking here about HIV. HIV. No, the yeah. church is against contraception. HIV takes one sexual encounter. Pregnancy and takes one right. sexual encounter. Yeah. Jack, right. just a final so, point. So, so the... Uh, church says that if you are faithful 
to your spouse and avoid sex outside of marriage, then you, you, this is a much safer way to combat AIDS. But maybe okay. not. Okay. okay, but we, we have other problems. We have rape, we have violence, sexual violence. These are the problems to tackle. And that, then we must leave it just for now because we are just reminding viewers that you can vote in our text poll this morning. The question we are asking, is the Catholic Church obsessed with sex? If you think it is, text the word vote, followed by yes. If you think it's not, text vote, followed by no. Our text number is 81771. Texts will be charged at your standard message rate. And you have around 20 minutes before the poll closes. Well, obviously, lots still to say about the Pope's visit. But it's time now for our look at the week's other big moral moments and... You just can't escape te sex. The tabloids have had a field day with what England striker Wayne Rooney may or may not have got up to. With prostitutes, Julie, the Rooneys have obviously asked for privacy as they deal with this issue and, and will leave their personal story out of it. But what do you make this week? And we've seen um, one of the women allegedly involved talking today about giving up this sort of work. What do you think it says about the fact that young, well-educated women still going into this industry? Well, the vast majority of women in prostitution um, have not had the benefit of an education. Uh, many women in prostitution enter at the age of... I think the average age in the UK is 14. So you're talking about child sexual abuse, you're talking about women making a choice out of no other choice. It is not work, it's abuse. And these women, women in prostitution, are given very, very little help to exit. We're shown media images of, of the Billy Piper type happy hooker, um, which, you know, obviously somewhere these women exist, but they're in the tiny minority. Mm -hmm. We need to be looking at why men are given permission to pay for sex with women. And, I'm sorry to say, also with children, women do not choose this industry um, because they just wake up one morning aged 18 and think, shall I be a researcher or shall I be a prostitute? And men's use of women in prostitution is abuse and it should be tackled. And we're starting to tackle it now, but this permission that men are given is absolute nonsense. It is harmful to the women and to communities. Colm, what struck you as you read these stories? Yeah, I, I think first of all, just the, 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 ob the obsession with the individual story of uh, uh, a young man who's uh, lost the run of himself, makes too much money and has gone out and, and lost control perhaps. Um, I, I think you're quite right to take the focus off the individual story. There's a couple who need a chance to rebuild whatever they can mm -hmm. in their own relationship. But I, I mean, I do think the great tragedy of the sex industry generally is its dehumanis dehumanizing impact on all. And I think we have an awful lot to do if we're to educate. First of all, I think we need to educate people much more clearly about the healthy aspects of sex and sexuality yes. and sexual expression, which is part of why the earlier com discussion we've just had has such significance, I think, about attitudes towards sex and sexuality. Young men and indeed young girls mm -hmm. need to be taught a much healthier approach, a much more empowered mm -hmm. approach to understanding their own sexuality. And we need a whole different conversation about valuing the human that lies at the heart of what it means to be a truly healthy, loving, sexual yes. human being. Well, and you can't right. buy and sell another no. human being. Uh, you shouldn't buy and sell, yeah. Let's move on to another story. Uh, not so much in the tabloids this week as about the tabloids. Um, the fact that uh, the phone hacking scandal uh, has not gone away. Um, politicians have sort of given an impression this week that they live in fear of, of the tabloid journalists. Um, what are the rights and wrongs of investigative journalism and, and, and the fact that it unearths wrongs and in order to unearth some you have to do some wrong yourself? I, I think many politicians live in fear of tabloid journalists and indeed as we're seeing now tabloid journalists are beginning to live in fear of other tabloid <laughs> journalists because of the level of investigation that's happening. The investigative journalism is, journalism is hugely important. I mean, you know, the whole issue of clerical sexual abuse for instance would never have come to the fore had journalists not been prepared to allow people like me to speak about those experiences. It's yeah. hugely important. But I think we can't simply allow uh, um, the, the infringing of people's privacy and, and their right to privacy to be justified in the name of a blanket public interest call. It's, it's not necessarily in the public interest to know who Prince William or Prince Harry might be dating or the private conversations mm. they might have with each other. Yeah. And I think that's incredibly disingenuous. <laughs> but but, but where yeah. there is a criminal justice issue is clearly if the law has been broken, uh, that needs to be investigated. The yeah. suggestion somehow the politicians have been able to somehow prevent the police or the newspaper and the media have somehow been, been able to subvert the criminal justice system and not, and not pursue these issues and not bring them to prosecution is a real yeah. worry. Um, Jack, the words idiot 
and nutter yeah. uh, have been applied to um, a religious man in America, the American pastor who threatened to burn copies of the Quran. How did someone with a congregation of estimated to be between 30 and 50 people get to cause such a sort of and that's outrage the worldwide? Yeah, and that's the amazing thing, how he can actually get Hillary Clinton to phone him directly and say, don't do this. You know, who is he? I mean, such is the power in the, of the internet. And now we all know about this nutter. And uh, obviously what he is, was planning to do was disgraceful and should not be done because his incitement to violence and, and, and so on. But it does bring another aspect, which I think which is very interesting, which is that one is not allowed to discuss Islam and, uh, in, in, you know, in the media, as we are discussing the Catholic Church here. I think the media have a very good role to probe and investigate and, uh, and to discuss things here. Like, like we're doing here, but he we're not allowed. He, we're he, not allowed to talk about Islam. We're not allowed to talk yeah, about the role of women just, in Islam. He wasn't being prevented from discussing Islam. He was doing something quite provocative. No, no. Obviously, he, he, sh he shouldn't burn the Quran at all. What I'm saying is that there is a sort of culture uh, that we don't know how to deal with. I wonder how true. I wonder how true that is anymore. I mean, the, the reality is it's been made very clear that his right, he, his right to freedom of expression, which mm. is the right I would obviously yeah. support, means that he will, if he wants to, be allowed to burn the Quran. Yeah. I mean, you know, never has so much bad facial hair gotten so much public attention. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's that's right. Right. It, it, yes. it is. It is. It is a quite style. extraordinary yeah. story. But I, I absolutely agree. I think we should be able to discuss and examine and question public, any human yeah. institution, including faith institutions. Sure. I think that does happen with Islam. Mm. I think it, it perhaps needs to happen on. An awful lot more and issues in relation to women in Islam yeah. definitely need an awful lot sure. more focus and attention but this isn't going to get us there. No. It, this no, this, is, this, is, this is outrageous. It, it, is, it yeah. is truly outrageous. outrageous and actually what's happened is that the, the, the scaremongering of some of the tabloid press um, in describing this Muslim community centre which is exactly what yeah. it would be yeah. is of it course is a mosque ground zero. right next mm. to ground zero. A ground zero and in fact thinking about the, the uh, geography of, of Manhattan it's actually a long way away mm. that bears no relationship to that particular area. And, and I'm sorry, if we actually allow places of worship, such as churches and synagogues, etc., then why on earth is there such a, a, a terrible lot of scaremongering mm. about a cultural centre that bears no relation to the tragedy of 9-11? All right, well, you can continue uh, those debates on our website, and I'm sure you will. Uh, coming up on Sunday Morning Live... It's taken a bit of a bruising so far this morning, but is the Catholic Church actually a force for good? If you've got a webcam, go to our website and click on the video call link to take part. You can phone us, you can make your views known by text, by email, and you can tweet us, and all the details are on the screen now. And keep voting too in our text poll this morning. We're asking, is the Catholic Church obsessed with sex? If you think it is, text the word vote, followed by yes. If you think it isn't, text vote, followed by no. Our text number is 81771, and texts will be charged at your standard message rate. You have around 10 minutes before the poll closes. <laughs> Well, it's time now for our Sunday stand, where we hear from someone who thinks the rest of us are due a rethink on a big issue. Protests against the Pope's visit this week come from some, like Julie, who even say he should be arrested. But is the barrage of criticism levelled at the Catholic Church in danger of obscuring the many good things it stands for in the Christian world? Columnist Melanie McDonough thinks so, and this is her Sunday stand. The Catholic Church is a force for good in the world. The Pope is a good man. You'd never think it, though, to judge from the way some people talk about the Church and the papacy. This is Westminster Cathedral, seat of the head of the Catholic Church in England and Wales. It was built at a time when the Church was the object of profound hostility. Back then, anti-Catholicism was almost a defining part of the British psyche. Now the Church faces a new brand of anti-Popery both against the institution and against this particular Pope, Benedict, who comes here on Saturday. Part of that hostility is richly deserved, an honest response to the appalling child abuse committed by some Catholic clergy. But any audit of the good and evil committed by the Catholic Church would come down squarely in favour of the Church. In the developing world, the Church is the single biggest provider of humanitarian assistance and development help. Indeed, it has been described as the world's largest and most diverse humanitarian organisation. It is the single biggest provider of HIV AIDS care in Africa, 
and one of the biggest providers of girls' education. The Church is a defender of human rights. The Vatican, for instance, has tried to influence the Iranian government in the current case of the woman condemned to death by stoning.